All right. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to Catching Up with Cameron. I'm your host, Cameron Mitchell, and today I have two very special guests to talk all things NBA. I have Stephen Touchstone of Touchstone Hoops and NBA analyst Jeff Van Gundy. Stephen, you want to introduce your platform a little bit? Yes, Cameron. Appreciate you introducing me. So my name is Stephen Touchstone, everyone. I have a website called touchstonehoops.com where I share my NBA thoughts and opinions, NBA power rankings, daily recaps, and things like that. I also have an Instagram page where I post um, game recaps, player performance recaps, um, highlight videos, daily stats that um, you probably won't see on other pages, um, did you know tidbits, and things like that. So um, give me a follow on both those platforms. And like I said, Cameron, I appreciate being here this morning. No problem. All right. Well, Jeff, you just spent, you just came back from spending some time in the NBA bubble, didn't you? I did. I was there um, from July 21st. I think I got back around October 13th, 14th, something like that. A lot of basketball and, yeah. a, and a lot of boredom too. And uh, just the daily monotony of the same hotel room, the same menu, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, every day was like Groundhog's Day, you know, just the best parts obviously were the uh, the times the games were going on, right. but the lead up to the games at times, uh, and particularly as it got later in the playoffs where there were less games, the off days, those were sheer drudgery. Dang, I'm sorry to hear that, but do you think overall that the bubble was pretty successful? Very, uh, that they got through it uh, without you know, much trouble, you know, a couple incidents where guys violated a, a, a rule or two, but nothing major. Uh, the health plan was on point. So there was a lot of moving parts. The per people that put it together, the detail operations, uh, logistic coordinators, uh, they did a magnificent job and you felt incredibly safe. Right. So what did you think of watching, like, what did you think of the first couple of games leading into the playoffs? Um, seeing Devin Booker and the Suns, what did you think? Like, I, I don't know. I was personally disappointed that they didn't have a chance to even make it to the playoffs after going undefeated in the bubble. What was it like at seeing it in person? Well, you know, I found the bubble games uh, before the playoffs to be much better played than I expected. I expected there to be a lot of rust uh, from the long uh, time off. Um, and really the offensive basketball individually and team-wise, I thought was outstanding right off the bat. I, I thought they played exceptionally well. And you mentioned uh, Phoenix. I, they had a tremendous 8-0 uh, run. Booker, I think, got to show that he is a true star and just hasn't been able to be blessed with a team that's capable of making a deep run. But I think that whole play-in scenario that they had Mm -hmm. uh, in the bubble I think you'll see it I, I bet you it becomes uh, a part of every year now I, I don't know how it'll be worked in mm -hmm. but I think it was a resounding success I think it's another way to make more money which is always good for the league of course. and I think it's something that will keep the excitement level up for more teams Stephen anything from you back in what Jeff said I thought it was terrific I thought it's a way to make more money for the league which is always a good thing as well and um, on, the, on the point of Devin Booker and the Suns, um, I think Devin Booker making the all-star team this year is going to give him a tremendous amount of confidence that shows that he can really play with the best in the league. And like Jeff said, he hasn't been blessed with necessarily the best team around him. Right. Um, but the team is improving quickly. They have a lot of young pieces, and I think they're a very exciting team going into next season. You know, I think what's interesting, too, is that bubble experience, either if a team had a bad experience and didn't play well mm -hmm. or played like Phoenix exceptionally well, is that going to propel them uh, to better play in the next season? Right. Uh, or is it have no impact? And I, I, I've never thought there's carryover from one season to the next, mm -hmm. uh, especially ending up well, even if you weren't in the playoffs. But I'm going to be interested to see if Phoenix gained, you know, either confidence or they, they think that they're going to be more now bold in free agency to right. try to – surround Booker with a little bit better uh, and deeper team. I, I'm, I'm interested to see how the carryover, um, it impacts this coming up season whenever it starts. Well, it's particularly interesting you mentioned that because Stephen was actually just saying that before you joined the call, like the Clippers on paper, they were like, they should have made it so much further. What do you think kind of happened with that team? Why didn't they make it any further? Well, I think the first thing is, uh, Denver, who came back from 3-1 down to beat them, 
Uh, Jokic is a is a true star. Murray played like a star uh, in the playoffs, and so they're they're really good. And I think the Clippers, you know, they had a lot of uh, they had some continuity issues. They had three guys leave the bubble and miss uh, time, practice time, uh, the lead up games, and I think it really hurt them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think they played particularly well. I think Paul George you know, struggled more than uh, I expected him to. And so I just don't think they played as well as they're capable of. And I think that they're going to bounce back with a tremendous year. And like you said, uh, Cammy, I think they're going to be uh, a favorite to win it all, despite them not playing particularly well in that last playoff series. Yeah, you think, you, do you think the same, Stephen? Um, I completely agree. I think they're going to come back extremely strong. Um, Paul George has already said publicly that next season he's coming on pretty much a revenge tour. Um, yeah. He got a lot of criticism for his play, especially in that Nuggets series and in the bubble in general. Um, and like Jeff said, the continuity just wasn't there. They had people leaving the bubble, coming in and out. Um, and so, and they had people resting during the season pretty consistently. And I just don't think that sends necessarily a good message to a lot of the guys down the bench. Right. Um, I know it's worked for Kawhi in the past. Um, but that, that, that was a different team, a different situation. I don't necessarily think that could carry over to that team, that the Clippers this past season. Um, so I definitely agree that with Jeff that um, they're going to come into next season extremely strong, and they should – if the team reigns, remains pretty much intact, they should be probably the favorites going into next season, at least on paper, in my opinion. Who would you say is who, – who do you think are – who's your favorite for the title next year, Jeff? Well, I think there's so much to be known about uh, free agency – um, who improves? I think it's a little early to say that until you see how the rosters are set. I do think the Clippers are well positioned okay. to be better this year than they were last year. I'll be interested to see, uh, do they make changes? You know, what do they do with Montrez Harrell? Do they re-sign him? Do they sign and trade him? Does mm -hmm. he leave uh, via free agency? Uh, he had such a good last year um, in the regular season. And then in the bubble and in the playoffs, uh, he was underwhelming. He just didn't play well. And he was out, as Stephen mentioned, he was out a, a good amount of the time. I think mm -hmm. he missed upwards to a month, you know, due to a personal situation. And so uh, I'll be interested to see how he bounces back personally, whether they sign him, trade mm -hmm. him, or he leaves. Uh, but there's so much to be done. I think the Lakers, uh, I'm interested to see what they're able to do to improve their team. I think they had uh, – past James and Davis, one of the least talented teams to win an NBA championship. Uh, I thought those guys made timely contributions, mm -hmm. but their talent level, I, I think it goes to how great James and Davis are. What a great job Frank Vogel did putting it all together. Absolutely. But they need to be thinking upgrade um, when this free agency, period, free agency period opens. I think uh, they'll be very aggressive trying to extend uh, this window of LeBron James and how long, you know, he can compete for championships. Right. What do you think, Steven? Um, I completely agree that the Lakers this past season were definitely not the best team on paper and that they are one of the weakest teams to win a title in quite some time. Mm -hmm. Like the contributions that they were getting from like Contavious Caldwell Pope in the finals, having a couple of games around 20 points and like six assists. I cannot tell you the last time I saw a Contavious Caldwell Pope six assists <laughs> game ever. Um, Rajon Rondo's a little one year older. Dwight Howard's one year older, so we never know um, health wise. So that will be, and if they're able to step up once again, um, and uh, that just like Jeff said, proves how good uh, LeBron James and Anthony Davis played, being able to carry them that far, um, beating a good Nuggets team pretty easily, and then beating a really solid Heat team in the finals pretty easily mm -hmm. as well. Um, LeBron James in year seventeen is still doing just amazing, amazing things, and so until someone. I, it's just hard for me to count out LeBron James next season as um, not the favorite going into next, going into next year, um, yeah. especially the Lakers, like Jeff said, retool a little bit and get a little better on paper. Right. Uh, because like uh, the team, so, some of the teams in the West are younger, getting a year more of experience. Um, Denver's going to get better. They think they can really compete for a title, I assume, after this, this past season. So you expect them to be very active in free agency and on the trade market. I know Bradley Beal's always been tied to them, and that would be a really cool landing spot for not only Bradley Beal, but for the Nuggets to – improve um and then um the clippers if they can do make it a couple more moves and we'll see what they do with montrose harrell as jeff said could be a very interesting team as well so the west next year should be stacked once again and i'm really looking forward to see how it plays out yeah and i think